Hello, ladies and gentlemen. My name is All Trades Jack, and I'm a Path of Exile casual player. I carry the burden of that title because in no way have I learned enough about this game or spent enough time with it to call myself a master. It's been almost three months since my Path of Exile first impressions video, and if I learned one thing, it's that veteran Path of Exile players are extremely friendly and extremely passionate about the game. But I lied. I learned quite a few things from posting a first impressions video, mostly from all your amazing comments on the video. Some of them were a couple sentences, some were essays, but all of them made playing the game way easier. Or at least made it so I didn't die as much. Now when I say I'm a casual player, I say that mostly because I tend to split my time between a ton of different games, which is why it took this long for my second Path of Exile video. I really wanted to put out a video after I'd finished the main story and got to endgame content, but my time over the past few months has been split between like three MMOs and Hearthstone, because the new Battleground mode is so fun to screw around with and has me addicted. But eventually I came back and I finished Path of Exile's main story. Here it is, my character in all his glory. A slayer duelist with high evasion and physical spells, with added fire damage, and I promise I know nothing more about my character than just that. For this video, I thought it would be fun to take a look at some of the most common gameplay advice I received in my first impressions video, and if it affected my gameplay much or not. It may help other new players if they need some tips, but more importantly, with the new Siege of Atlas League coming up, I'm gonna have to do this whole campaign over again with a new character. So please, leave your comments below and let me know if my lessons from the last YouTube comment section are well founded, or if I need more help because I'm just that terrible at this game, which is completely possible. As always, disclaimers up front. I completed the story, but that doesn't mean I took part in everything. I'll touch on the different side missions and other parts of the games that I unlocked during my playthrough like the Beast Menagerie or the Rogue Heist Missions Island, but I unlocked them, tried them once, and then moved on. It was getting too close to the end of the current league for me to spend too much time grinding everything in the game, but I enjoyed trying them out. One of the best ways to learn anything in life is to get advice from someone who has experience in that field. And the best way for me to learn Path of Exile is to read guides and YouTube comments from one of the world's most dedicated player base that I've ever seen. Seriously, some of you told me you had over 3,000 hours logged into the game. Which I understand. I played World of Warcraft for 14 years, so I'm not judging you. Far from it, I think it's awesome that a game can provide so much entertainment. So here I am, having only played like 30 hours or something just to get through the story the first time, on one character, having no idea if I could have saved myself 100 deaths by understanding the duelist class and how to build its skill tree better. But let's start with some of the awesome basic tips that you all gave me that completely changed my gameplay. The most common gameplay tip I got was to change my left click to click to move only. Holy hell did this make a huge difference. Before I made this change, I couldn't tell you how many times I got stuck in the middle of mobs or started running around misclicking because the left click was shared between click to move and a spell. After I changed it, I felt like I was walking on air. The entire game was about 50% less frustrating because I knew if I died, it was because I was bad, not because I had a poor mouse setup. I really can't exaggerate enough how important this tip is for new players. If you watch my first impressions video, you know that my strategy with my Marauder was to stand in one place and spam the sweep spell. That was only working because I was in Act 2, which is like level 18 or something like that. My Marauder was just tanky enough to withstand the punishment of standing still, but that wouldn't have lasted much longer. I can tell you exactly what I knew for sure, that constant movement is completely necessary in Path of Exile. It was slowly becoming apparent before, but when I fought General Gravisius in Act 3, only one act later, I found out the hard way that standing underneath the fire bombs was a bad idea. You constantly had to move to avoid them while still throwing punches to damage the boss. And as I got further and further into the game, avoiding attacks was essential, not just for bosses but for the regular enemies as well. There was this part of the game where I had to fight the Brine King, and I had to complete some quests to open up a passage to actually reach him. The most frustrating part of this was that there were probably a hundred enemies on your screen at all times, and there were these water elemental enemies that would shoot out orbs of water that would freeze you for like five whole seconds. If I messed up and got hit by one of those orbs, I would go from not being damaged at all to being dead almost instantly. It was extremely frustrating, but it was a good reminder that I needed to practice my movement because the game only got more punishing after that. Just under Understanding this concept, as remedial as it may be, changed my entire strategy while playing the game. So please, do us all a favor and tell your favorite new players that left click is for move only. One of the complaints I had in my first impressions video was that the mini map in the top left was near useless and running around with the large map was cumbersome and filled your entire screen. I still feel the mini map is pretty useless, but one of the most common tips I was given was to go to my settings and change the opacity of the large map. 
The main problem I was facing was that the large map was see-through enough that I wouldn't close it to engage with the constant barrage of monsters you fight in this game, but it wasn't see-through enough to clearly let me see what was going on behind it without straining and bleeding from my eyeballs, and I found myself constantly needing the large map up to find my way around. The game has a ton of locations that are difficult to find your way through with just your memory and a sense of direction, so the large map became necessary for me just to find the next place I needed to go. I feel like the developers probably understood this issue or got feedback from players because they gave you a lot of customization for such a simple map. You can change the opacity of the entire map, but if you want, you can decide which parts to leave visible and which parts to hide. Like I want the walls to be very visible, but I don't care about seeing the terrain on the map. This was definitely helpful and a much appreciated difference to my gameplay. I could finally see what was going on behind the map, but still have it available to keep moving towards my goal. Yes, I made the unfortunate new player mistake of thinking I should play standard since I had no experience with the game. This, as I was told many times, is incorrect. Everyone plays the League because it's the newest and shiniest content and your characters end up in standard purgatory at the end of League anyway. Originally, I just thought that standard was like an easy version, and I chose it because I wanted to understand the game before I dove full into it and joined the hardcore players in the current league. I created my Marauder and a bunch of other characters to try out the game, and my entire first impressions video was based on the standard league. Now that I'm older, wiser, and was told by the collective YouTube comments section that I should always play the league, I created a new character, a duelist, to complete the main story in the Scourge League. Funny enough, this league is ending soon, and the Siege of Atlas League will be starting in about a week from writing this script, but as you can see, all of the footage in this video is from my duelist, and I was able to complete the main story before the current league ended. Thankfully, I now have the ability, no, the privilege, of doing this all over again for the new league next week. Not complaining, just preparing myself. But the Scourge League was fun to play through. I'm glad I was told to try it out. It's the newest content, and even though I don't know the intricacies of how exactly the Scourge League differs, I do know that it felt very different to play through. I got really caught up in playing around with the demon fighting toggling system that allows you to upgrade and corrupt equipment by slaying hordes of enemies. Though I think if I had spent more time with the game, I probably could have understood it more and really got more out of the Scourge League. I'm hoping that I can do that with the next league, but I'll give my thoughts on the Siege of Atlas once I learn more of the game and actually try it out for a couple weeks. But I did get this cool Siege of Atlas head piece cosmetic though. Wore it through pretty much my entire playthrough with my duelist. Don't worry, you don't have to be jealous, but I appreciate that you are. So this is a topic that had a couple of differing opinions that were left in the comments of my first video. The skill tree was something I mentioned was entirely a turn off to casual players, and I stand by that for the most part, simply because the skill tree looks daunting and takes a long time to understand. Even though I like it and others will too, not everyone is going to enjoy or want to spend the time to figure it out. It may be normal to MMO players to have mechanics that take months to understand, but if someone doesn't want to make that commitment to the game, looking at the skill tree will be their quitting moment. On the flip side, I also mentioned that the skill tree is one of the game's coolest features because it allows for an incredible amount of character customization. I also stand by this, and I found that a lot of my fun with leveling through the main story was trying my hardest to figure out the best way to spend my skill points without looking up a build. I had a lot of fun stacking my duelist with evasion and fire damage and dual wielding mastery, even though I had little to no idea if that was making my playthrough easier or more difficult. It was really exciting to get the flame golem spell and have so much fire damage that all my enemies would burn to death after a single hit. That was until I got to a section where all the enemies had fire resistance. So the advice I got, or rather some of the opinions I was given on the skill tree, are more about the viability of your skills and how committed you'll need to be to build an endgame viable character. There was a consensus that even though there are obviously builds that will be better than others, there is a good variety of meta builds and they change fairly often, so the skill tree never becomes too stale or solved to the point where it becomes pointless to try something new. But it seems that players are having differing opinions on how to attack the skill tree as a new player. On one side, new players are suggested to look up a build based on a spell they like and start the game with a guide, a much more analytical approach that prepares the new player for the end game with a character that can withstand a beating or deliver top damage. Others believe that a new player should just have fun with it and build whatever they like since the skill tree really only matters if you're completing difficult end game content, which may not be something you'll reach if you're just starting out. The fun of the game comes from customization, and for these players, the skill tree is the embodiment of character customization in video games. There is more to the debate on if the skill tree is an accomplishment or a detriment to the game, though from your comments, watching other videos, and reading some guides, one thing is definitely certain. The skill tree may be complex and crazy, but it is one of the defining factors that makes Path of Exile stand out as a unique ARPG. Playing through the entire campaign was a journey. 
I had so many moments of complete frustration, I had moments where I thought I would just quit and go back to playing Hearthstone, but every time I hit a rough part of the game that annoyed me to no end, the game would throw something cool in my face and bring me right back. Now that I've completed the main story, I wanted to give some honest feedback on my experience. Just a bit, I don't want this video to be too long and bore all of you, so I'll just talk about my favorite and least favorite part of my experience. And keep in mind everything I've said so far about my lack of true understanding of the game, this is just my opinion and I very well may just be unaware of how to fix that certain negative or how that positive turns into something terrible for endgame players. So first I want to talk about a couple of observations I made about the game's combat difficulty. As I got further and further into the game, the difficulty rose drastically, as expected. I know, that's how games work. I just felt that Path of Exile's difficulty was a bit over the top and artificial, and that it would unexpectedly spike and drop during some parts of the game. Not all the time. For the most part, I felt that the game was pretty balanced and leaned towards a rewarding but hellish amount of difficulty. If I was dying over and over again, it was because I had to change my strategy and try one more time. But this isn't a game where you have a long fight, make a mistake, and have time to adapt while continuing to fight. In Path of Exile, you try, you fail, and then you try again with a different strategy. Sometimes I would run into combat, both with bosses and with minions, that even though I felt like I was doing the best I could with the loadout I had, the enemy would simply overpower me, or take advantage of a single small mistake I made, and there simply was no time to react. Boom, I was dead. I think the first example of this is the Brian King section I had mentioned before. This is still fairly early on in the game, but by this point, I figured out how to use my guy well enough to do decent damage while on the move. There were a couple points in this one quest where that just wasn't enough, and it started happening more and more from there on. Usually, I would understand if it was because I just needed to play better, but as the game went on, I found myself getting hit with more and more what the f moments. The minions would either be no challenge at all, or the hardest minions I've ever had to face. They would either do no damage to me, or kill me with one hit. Someone freeze me and stun me, so I was forced to sit there and watch my health drop to zero. I realize in retrospect that I had definitely screwed myself with some of my gear and skills, because some online guides told me that I needed way more elemental resistance to even have a chance of staying alive for more than two seconds. But how was I supposed to know that going in? And some bosses were even worse. Towards the end of the game, I would just be running around with no clue as to how I was supposed to stay alive for more than five seconds. Not to mention that I was supposed to be dealing damage too. I remember there was a sewer boss that had blood balls blowing up everywhere, and I could not understand how I was supposed to dodge all of them, while at the same time dodging the boss, who would teleport around and blow up too. On top of that, I had to try and find a time to stop for a moment to do damage. It ended up being a clusterfuck of gameplay. This was also made worse by the fact that every time you respawned in the boss room, the boss fight mechanics were still going. So as soon as you enter the boss, room, you would spawn directly in one of those damaging abilities and die again. This was one thing that I appreciated before, because there was little to no break in gameplay when you died. You just spawned outside the room and ran back in. But this ended up being a necessary gameplay element instead of a convenient one, and the positive of getting right back into the action was quickly overshadowed by the negative of spawning in just to die again, and this feature was not available while fighting minions. So anytime you died while fighting minions, you would respawn at your last checkpoint, which in some maps took like 5 minutes of walking to get back to where you were. I also felt that the difficulty spikes at a second's notice and then drops again. It's not that I don't think this can work, but for long periods of playing, it was hard to know what to expect. It feeds into that feeling of anxiety and feeling rushed to keep moving and keep killing, which technically is the point of the game, but it is definitely something you should be aware of when going through the main story for the first time. It's a different type of experience. When you look at this graph of how Path of Exile's difficulty works over the course of the game, you can see how it differs from others. This down here is any new Pokemon game, where it starts easy and only gets slightly more difficult. This up here is a game like Sekiro or Dark Souls, where the game starts difficult and gets harder. And this is a game like Path of Exile. This difficulty curve tells a player that they won't know what's coming next. Moment to moment gameplay may be at the top of the difficulty spike or the bottom. So when they die out of nowhere, the player may feel like they didn't have enough time to prepare for it. But keep in mind, I don't like to complain about difficulty a lot. I like having a challenge. And this difficulty could very well be that I just don't understand the game well enough. In fact, I'm sure it is. Obviously, other players have done way more difficult content than this, but in my opinion, part of having a good challenge means that there is a significant feeling of success after you finish, which for most bosses was the case. It was only a few that frustrated me enough that when I finished, I just sighed and said, finally. But I have to stress that just because I have these few frustrations about combat doesn't mean I didn't enjoy it. With each consecutive boss fight, I was blown away. The visuals of these fights and the creativity behind each boss was insanely cool. The first one that got me super hyped was the fight against Piety and then Malachi. Not only were we in the belly of the beast that had floors and walls made of viscera and blood, but both of these boss fights were mechanically fun, visually amazing, and made you feel like a badass for completing them. Then every boss fight after that was just as visually astounding. The Katava fight on top of the cathedral got my heart racing, the battle with Lunaris and Solaris was really cool mechanically and conceptually, even though it kicked my ass. I also like the fact that the score 
Scorpion Queen of the Desert fight had phases of very different mechanics. So overall, even though I had some frustrating moments in the combat, and I think it requires a bit more of out of the game knowledge before fully enjoying it, the visuals and sense of sheer epicness of the encounters was unbelievably spectacular. The only other observation I'd like to make in this video is that even though I didn't fully understand everything that was going on with the stats, weapons, craftings, and skill tree, I fully appreciated that it all existed. I think there's something to be said about a game that offers so much character stack customization and still feels relatively balanced to play. I don't know the nuances of how unbalanced or balanced the game actually is. It would take someone with much more of an understanding of the game to truly tell you that, but at least while going through the main story, I didn't know what the hell I was doing and I still managed to beat the game. I didn't follow any guides, I only took minor gameplay tips from the YouTube comment section of my first impressions video and I was able to figure it out. Was my playthrough 10 times harder than it could have been? Maybe. I don't know yet. I'll tell you after I play in Siege of Atlas with a new character, but for this playthrough, I managed to beat the game with my choice of character customization. I even appreciated some of the optional features of the game, like the Beast Menagerie or the Rogue's Harbor. It gives added depth to the game and it provides another option on how you can build your character power. I really liked the boss slaying feature that gave you some extra stats for killing optional bosses. I liked the endless delve operation with Nico, the miner. And even though I didn't engage in any of these systems extensively, I appreciated that they gave me the option. Like I said in the intro, if I had more time, I would love to figure out some of these side systems, but I'll leave them for another video. Just to be sure, spoiler alert, I'm going to be talking about the last boss here. Quick editor's note, my recording software did not capture my screen correctly during the Kitaba fight, so instead of forcing you to watch broken, corrupted footage, I'll be playing a guide in the background of how I was supposed to complete the fight. I didn't watch any guides during my playthrough, so just remember that when I say I didn't know what the strategy was to beat Kitaba, I mean that during my actual playthrough, I hadn't watched this video. I apologize for the inconvenience. Okay, some quick thoughts on the final boss and finishing Act 10. The final Katava battle was f insane, and I want to put a question out to anyone watching this. How the hell do you beat this boss? I was able to complete it after dying a hundred times and spending about 30 minutes bashing my skull against the keyboard, but I want to honestly know if there's a strategy to this. I know that my character wasn't built for this. Every mechanic in this fight was a one-shot to me, and I didn't really have problems with Kitava's mechanics. I would just be completely overwhelmed in the minion section. My character didn't have enough health to stay alive for more than a couple seconds without me spamming my health potions and trying to get off some attacks for the leech. My character also didn't do enough damage to actually kill any of the minions fast enough to find a break in the onslaught to actually do damage to Kataba. Like I said, I was able to complete it eventually, but I really am curious if there's a better strategy that I could have followed with the setup I had, or if it simply was that I should have built the duelist with better spells. Or maybe I just needed to level up a bit more since I beat Kataba at level 64. The battle was visually perfect. The epicness of the situation and the concept behind the fight was a mastery of building suspense and then following through with a truly legendary battle and Kitaba's mechanics were difficult but fun to try and overcome. The minion phase was really where the fight fell short, at least in my experience. Dying a hundred times and then getting a success screen doesn't really make me feel successful. It makes me feel like Doctor Strange, where he beat the big bad guy by just dying over and over again until it got annoyed and left. This isn't a criticism of the boss fight really, it's more of a criticism of the new player experience and how the battles will feel lesser because new players won't understand the game enough to beat these challenges the way it was intended, unless the challenge is to die over and over and slowly whittle down the boss's health. But that's it. That was the campaign. I made it to Ariath and started to do the epilogue, but decided to wait until I could do this with a new character in the Siege of Atlas League. I plan to try playing a Templar in the new league just because I want to try out the class. I will probably start a couple weeks in and finish the campaign over time. I would love to hear your thoughts on the league once it comes out and any tips you may have for me now that I am spending way more time with Path of Exile. I had a lot of fun playing the game all the way through, at least to maps and the rest of the end game. Also, I appreciate each and every one of you for watching and commenting on my videos. I really do read every comment and enjoy hearing your thoughts. But most importantly, I hope you enjoyed the video, because that's what I really care about. I hope you enjoy your Siege of Atlas adventures, and I can't wait to see what we talk about next.